Hey everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. We're outside today because the weather is fantastic and I thought I would take the opportunity to show you guys how to make a granny triangle. And what's more fun than just the granny triangle, I mean it's a great builder, don't get me wrong, but I love turning them into buntings and so I thought I would show you guys how to make this fantastic scrap busting project today out of, well, whatever you want. I've used cotton but you can use acrylic and you can use wool. I love buntings. They are the most festive decoration I can think of. It's reusable, it's washable, you can use them inside or outside. They're great for birthday parties and, and just about any kind of celebration really. Weddings, showers, baby showers. They look really cute in a nursery and they're really adorable in your bedroom or just about anywhere else you want to put them, including the garden. And I've added mine to my little bird sanctuary here that the chipmunk is making available to him. <laughs> Anyway, grab your bag of scraps, grab your favorite hook, let's head to the craft table and we'll make ourselves a granny triangle bunting. <laughs> For today's granny triangle, you can bust through your scraps. I'm making mine in cotton. This is a four ply worsted weight. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle for weaving in your tail ends, and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I9. This is because I want a slightly larger stitch size. And once you've got all of those things assembled, we can get started. We're going to begin by making a slip knot. You don't want this too tight. You want it to be able to move around comfortably on your hook. And we're going to chain five. This is so we can create a circle. So you're going to join with a slip stitch to your first stitch and that'll make you a circle that will fit over the end of your index finger. And this is the, cin the circle that we're going to work our entire first row into. So because we're working in double crochet, just like a granny square, we have to chain three to begin. That brings us up to the right height. And that chain three in this row and every other row counts as a double crochet. So this is the first double crochet of our first shell. And a shell is three double crochets. So you're going to double crochet two more times after your chain three into that circle that we made. So everything works into the circle. There's your first shell and now we're going to create a corner. So my corners, I like to do two chains. That gives you a nice sort of right angle. We're going to work another shell <laughs> into our circle. Shells are three double crochet. There we go. Get some slack on my yarn here. So there's shell one and a corner of two chains. Shell two, we're going to put in another corner, which is two more chains. And because triangles are based on three, we have one more shell to do in order to finish our first row. So we're going to work one more shell or three double crochets into that center circle. There we go. So there's shell one, a corner of two chains, shell two, a corner of two chains, and our last shell. And before we finish off, make sure you put in those last two chains, which is your final corner. And you're going to join to the top of that chain three you made to begin. And now I like, for neatness sake, you can just sort of stick it through the middle if you want, but I like to try and pick up the top of the stitch. So I run the, the top of the slip stitch, or I should say the chain in this part, over top of my hook and the bottom runs underneath. Then I just slip stitch to join. And this is a nice um, thing to do. At the end of every single row, just to try and keep your triangle flat while you work, identify your three corners and just pull them out right. And that will help keep your work flat because your triangle is going to want to poof out in the middle a little bit. Now I like to work in the same direction when I'm making granny triangles. So in order to start 
properly, I need to get to the next chain two space. And because I'm heading in this direction, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to slip stitch across the top of those two double crochets, or slip stitch across the top of your shell, and then slip stitch right into that space. And now I can begin my second row from a space. And I want to do that because it makes just makes everything a lot easier. You always want to be working in a space. So I'm going to chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet. And I'm going to work the rest of my first shell into this corner space. And because we're in a corner space, that means I need to create another corner. So I'm going to chain two and work another shell into the same space. So every successive row will increase by three more shells. So every next row, so every row will increase by three shells. So your first row will have three, your second row will have six, your third row will have nine, and so on and so on. In between my shells, when I'm on the straightaway, um, on a flat side, I like to put one chain in between, and that's just a personal preference, but I like that space it creates. It gives you a little more flexibility, and you have to work into a space. The next space is a corner, so we're going to do the same thing. Shell, chain two, shell, into this corner. So three double crochets is one shell. We're in a corner space, so we need to chain two to create a corner. <laughs> And then we finish it off with another shell. And now any of you who have done the traditional granny square with me are going to definitely see the similarities in this. We're going to chain one as a spacer because we're on a side. The next space we're working into is the next corner space. So we're going to repeat shell, chain two, shell into that space. Okay, that's your last corner space, your last space of row two, which means that we need to complete row two by joining to the top of our chain three. But before we do that, we want to put in one chain as a spacer, because it gives us just a little more space. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work my hook up into the top of that chain, and then slip stitch to join. I like to put it down and straighten it out. So grab the corners and pull it out. Maybe use the heat of your hand just to sort of press it a bit. And don't worry, when you get to the end of your granny triangle, you might feel that it's a bit poofy. If it's really poofy and you don't want to wait until you've completely finished your project, you can steam block it and that will flatten it all out and make it lie flat into a triangle. Okay, row three. Same thing, we want to scoot across the top of that sort of shell that's in between us and the next space by slip stitching across the top of it. Slip stitch into that corner space and we start all over again. Chain three to begin. The corner is a shell, two chains, and a shell. Now, we're heading across our first proper side. So the next space we're working into is actually a space in between two shells across the side. So this isn't a corner. So all you want to do is work a single shell into it. But to get there, you want to chain one for a spacer, because you want that extra bit of flexibility. Then work a shell into that middle space. And every side space from here on out just gets a single shell and all shells across the sides of your triangles are separated by a single chain. That just gives you a little bit more flexibility and space. So your next space, as you can see, is a corner. And we all know the drill now. It's shell, chain two, shell. Okay, I'm going to work one more side with you. So I've completed my corners, which is shell, chain two, shell. I've made a single chain that gets me into my next space, which is that space along the side. So I work a single shell, and remember, shells are three double crochets. So there's my shell. I'm going to chain one, 
and then my next space is the corner. So I'll let you guys finish row three by yourselves, and then I'll catch up with you for row four. All right, I've completed row three. I'm just going to stretch it out, give it a little bit of heat to flatten it. I'm definitely looking at a triangle here. And I'm going to scoot across the top of that shell. So by I'm going to slip stitch right across the top of it and into the corner space so that I can begin row four. So quick recap. Each row begins with three chains. That counts as a double crochet. You're starting in a corner. So every corner space gets shell, chain two, shell. So shell, two chains, and another shell, all worked into the corner space. So every corner space gets shell, chain two, shell. When you're working across the sides of your triangle, you separate each shell with a single chain, identify the next space, and work a single shell into it. So all side spaces get one shell, Make sure all your shells are separated by a single chain. And then every corner gets shell, chain two, shell. And that is it. I'll let you finish row four, and then we'll come back and we'll assemble the whole thing into a pretty bunting. Once you're finished row four, or however many rows you want to make your granny triangle, just snip your yarn, you don't need much. Pull it back through that loop on your hook. Pull it nice and tight, and if you're using cotton, you won't have to worry about it unraveling too, too much. And then I like to pick up a piece of the back. So I'm working on the back now. Just a piece of one of the stitches running down one of my last double crochets. And then I take my needle and stuff it through all of those double crochet bottoms in my last corner. And that just provides me with a nice, simple, quick place to pull down my tail. And it's going to pull it a little, so make sure you pull it back out. There we go. So that's all the tail that's left. I'm just going to double back, so skip over the last little stitch I came out of, double back, and that should be locked into place. Now typically buntings don't get a lot of activity, but if you're making these for a blanket and you feel you need to lock your, your yarn back in a little more, cut an extra long tail and just go back and forth three times and you should be good. Before you begin, I think it's great to lay all of your triangles out in the pattern that you want them to show up in your bunting. So I've gone with the sort of traditional rainbow hue effect, but if you were doing two colors, you might want to make sure they were all alternating. This just makes it quicker for you to grab them as you go. So we're going to begin our bunting chain with a slip stitch, or I should say a slip knot, sorry. And we're going to chain 10. So there's a chain of 10. Join to the first chain you made with a slip stitch. And this is going to give you a nice big industrial, well, hook, for lack of a better word. You can hook that onto a doorknob, um, I should say a little cupboard knob or a nail. You can put it on the hook, um, you can hook it on the edge of a door frame. If you need to make it bigger, you can go ahead and do that. But I find 10 makes a nice big loop to work with. And since I'm going to be pretty much just hooking mine on a nail, that should be good enough for me. The next thing we're going to do is create the space between the hook and your first granny triangle. So I'm going to put in seven, because I think I like the length of that, but you can count, um, try it out, sort of lay one down, decide how long you want it. You don't want it too far away. I think seven works for me. When you're ready, grab your first granny triangle, identify a corner, and join with a single crochet to that corner. There you go. Then you're just going to single crochet across the top through every single stitch and every single space. I'm using white as my great big join chain <laughs> or the, the bunting string because I used every other color of the rainbow <laughs> in my, my bunting and I thought white would be a really pretty fresh unifying factor. But when I was considering the colors for this, I also thought black would be pretty sharp too, because I love that stained glass window effect. 
but I am going for some sort of a summery, sweet, sorbet kind of look here. So white it is for me. Make sure you put your last single crochet in the final corner, so the other top corner space. It'll look something like that. That almost looks like a strawberry. Hmm, I've got an idea. <laughs> and then work the same number of chains, so at least that number, so I'm going to work seven, that you worked between your hook and your first granny square, or I should say granny triangle. If you feel you need more, you can add a few more. But it's always good to lay them down. I think seven's a nice spacer. Because remember, when they're all hanging, you want just a little bit of space between them. So seven it is for me. And then you just join with a single crochet in the next corner space. And work a single crochet across the top of every stitch and space across your next granny triangle. And that's all there is to it. You just single crochet across the top of every single granny triangle. Work the same number of chains in between each triangle so that you've got sort of a nice balanced even look. And then once you get to the very end, work the same number of chains that you worked between your hook and your first granny triangle. And then add a marker if you need to. Chain 10 and join back to that first one or where you placed your marker to create your other loop. Then you can weave in your tails and you're all finished. Alright, once you've finished, so I've chained my last seven and then ten more and joined with a slip stitch to that first of ten, grab your yarn needle and just pick up the backs of some of the chains. And This can be a little tricky, so the backs of some of the chains. You don't have to do this if you're not too concerned about neatness. I mean after all this is just a little hook in a larger bunting. But I do like to weave in my tails just to make sure that the whole thing doesn't unravel. And then do the same thing. So turn it around and weave back. And now your bunting's all ready to hang. That is my granny triangle bunting. It is a super scrap buster, a lot of fun, and whips up pretty quickly. Also reusable and washable, especially if you're using cotton or acrylic like I am here. And that is it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you had fun making this with me this week. If you make a bunting, I would love to see it. You can tag me at Jade and Stitches on Instagram or Google Plus, and you can send me your pins on Pinterest. I'm also at Jade and Stitches there. And if you are still looking for a little more fun to have with the crochet bug, you can pop over to our website and check out some of the free patterns we have over there and my little blog. I should really update that. Anyway, <laughs> we'll see you again next week, everybody. Have an awesome week. Bye. <laughs>